Hi guys, it's Summers here and today I thought it best that we take a look at the new for 2019 specification front wings, seeing as that's where the most design action has taken place so far. So to start off with, let's break down the wing into three distinct sections, as that may help you to understand the design decisions taken by each team. Firstly we have the Y250 juncture, with the central 500mm of the front wing home to what we call a neutral section, given that everyone must utilise the same design here. However, since its introduction in 2009, the teams have used it as a way of creating a very energetic vortex. You'll know this as the Y250 vortex. This is created due to the interaction of the neutral section and the main plane, with two differing pressure gradients colliding to form the vortex. This vortex can be harnessed by the designers and each team have their own way of doing so, in order to suit their requirements downstream. You'll see them shape both the main plane and flap tips above in order that it alters the vorticity and direction of the flow structure, reducing the impact of the tyre's wake on the other aerodynamic surfaces in the neighbourhood. The flaps are stacked winglets that work together to create downforce. Their angle can be adjusted to help the driver to balance the front to rear downforce distribution at each track. This cannot be done when the car is in motion though, and is only adjusted before each session and during a pit stop. Under the previous regulations, the available area for the flaps was already too much, compared with the amount of downforce needed to balance the car, and so with the wings growing even further still in 2019, there will clearly be some different design routes taken by the teams to use the flaps in other ways. Critical in the previous generation of wings, the outboard section, that area just ahead of the tyre, was previously where the most action was at, with all manner of complex and torturous shapes used to manipulate the flow field and create outwash. On top of the flaps in this region we also found the cascades, which were angled outward to further enhance the outwash effect. Whilst little to no restrictions on the number of underwing strakes and the end plate design often led to them being overtly complex too. For 2019 two camps seem to have emerged straight away, and I think it's important for me to show you who is doing what and try to establish why they're trying to do it. So, the two camps that have emerged so far are Mercedes, Red Bull and Haas, with what you'd consider the conventional model expected of the 2019 regulations, which utilise full span and full height flaps, and prefer to use the now more restricted end plate and strakes which must fit into the predetermined bounding boxes, whilst using the slot gap separators and wing adjusters to help guide flow outboard. Then we have Ferrari, Alfa Romeo and Toro Rosso, who are all looking to maximise the flap height at the inboard end, helping with the Y250 vortex, but as the flap runs across towards the end plate they've opted to twist them, flattening them out and drooping them down towards their anchor point. Alfa Romeo's interpretation is clearly the most aggressive of all three, setting them apart even from their stable mates, and is obviously born from a desire to create as much outwash as is possible, even if a little messy in its own right. In the case of what we've determined to be a missing wing section from Alpha, it does little to inhibit the flow as it hits the tyre's face, whilst the other aerodynamic furniture is also angled or positioned to induce outwash, indicating that these flow structures will become joined up, pulling the airflow across and around the front tyre. At this stage I think it's important to also say that McLaren, Racing Point and Renault all have more halfway house approaches, and we perhaps see them move towards one of the design features that we've mentioned above. Where all these designs appear to follow a similar trend is in the design of the main plane, with the outer section lifted up to expose the twin strakes and the lower edge of the end plate, which in most cases now features its own foot plate, which also propagates a vortex on its own, altering the shape, design and properties of the arch foot plates that, you, that are used on the outside of the wing. End plate design is also an interesting nuance that divides the grid, with most choosing to kick the rear section out as late as possible, while some have chosen a gradual bend to theirs. This decision is interlinked with every other aspect of the wing's design, and one that Mercedes have decided to go against the grain with, as theirs actually kicks inwards, perhaps invoking a similar airflow structure to the drooped wings, albeit with its own positives and negatives. In conclusion, they're still all trying to do the same thing, beat the regulations and create outwash. They're just going about it in different ways, and it'll be fascinating to see how that develops over the course of testing, let alone the season. If you've enjoyed this content, please don't forget to hit the like button, and also subscribe to my channel for more Formula 1 content.